Okay, Jonathan, we are up on YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. This is before. Hi there, the- folks. Hi yeah, hi there. We're getting ready for the podcast, and this is going to be episode 49. Mm-hmm. And it's all going to be about uh, WordPress backups, uh, the actual WordPress backup services. So give me about two seconds of silence, and we'll start the podcast. Good evening. Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 49. Okay, Jonathan, today we're going to talk about WordPress backup services. In episode 48, we went into detail, detail about backup plugins and the key backup plugins. thought maybe you want to go over real fast, just name those plugins that you like. And are you going to tell us today which plugin you really like before you go into uh, backup services? Uh, I'm not, going to, not quite, but I, I'll just quickly go through. I, I think the two leaders of the pack from the last episode are Backup Buddy and um, Back- Updraft, Updraft Plus, you know. Updraft my, Plus, we have that. Yes, Updraft Plus and uh, Backup Buddy are the two that kind of, um, you know, and I chose the ones that I, I've i used. I know other people use. There's a number of other ones out there. You know, there's no shortage of backup plugins, but... The two that you know I've tried, I know, and I think offer the best balance of price with functionality are Backup Buddy okay. and uh, our Updraft Plus, um, our um, our English developer. You know, um, right? Which I, I use Updraft Plus like it. So anyway, driving on, we need to get to this WordPress backup services. First of all, explain what WordPress backup services are as opposed to a backup plugin. Well, um, I think the big, basically, you know, the plugin, you install a plugin and either you save your database or you save your database in your physical files. You can either save them on the server, which a lot of the free plugins do, which I do not recommend. I, I I think if you get anything from these couple of podcasts that we're doing on Backup Bill, is that I strongly advise people to have some system that's storing their backup away from the actual um, where their physical files are normally hosted. Um, it just isn't a good idea to have a really important backup where your normal hosting, where your normal physical WordPress files are and the database it's just not a good idea. Well, Bill. With, with your plugin, you just have to use Dropbox, and you solve that problem. Yeah, like, like what we discussed last week, a lot of them. That's where, that's you know, it varies. Some of them it varies. You can still store externally, but it's just a manual. You you got to do the backup manually. Where you where you have to pay for the premier, you get scheduling functionality. Some um, the cut off between the free version and the paid version is that the free version only does back up on the hosting site and you have to pay for the premier to be able to store externally. It varies depending on the plugin bill. Um, but I, you know, the scheduling is really great. But if you can't afford to pay for that, having a plugin that you have to do it manually, but as long as it backs up externally is is still good. What is bad is having a plug-in system that only um, only does it manually and then also only stores the files on that actual server. That That is not an ideal situation, Bill. So let's move on to the services. So the services... Um, Basically, the, they, you normally have to install a plugin, but um, they're 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 providing a whole kind of interface, um, a whole kind of SaaS system, where not they're offering not only backup but full recovery as well. And that was another factor when we were looking at the plugins. Some plugin backup plugins. They do excellent, but they don't offer a kind of uh, interface for recovery or migration. 
you have to do it manually where the two that we recommended if you go for the full versions bill they offer sophisticated interfaces for recovery and migration and this and that's what these services also normally do and we're going to start with the the big granddaddy of them all in a way and it, it's a company that is it's a division of automatic the parent company of wordpress wordpress.com and also has a strong affiliation with wordpress.org even though wordpress.org is a foundation um one of the key corporate members of that foundation is automatic so they offer a service called vault press and it's a pretty slick service bill um is I, I would say it's probably one of i, I i'm a bit reluctant to say this because i don't but it's kind of like the rose royce of backup systems really um it's got a pretty slick interface for recovery um include um they have two levels one of the the cheaper levels about nine dollars a month or you can pay 99 dollars one of the things i haven't clarified is that some key functionality is not offered in their backup bundle to my mind if you want the full power of this you've got to go up and you've got to go up to what they call is their security bundle um but the part that they don't include this might get a little bit confusing but the part that they don't include in the backup bundle which they include in the security bundle is not really related to security to my mind it's the ability to have a full backup archive that means it's a bit like um time machine for it's a kind of version of time machine that you find on the mac right that enables you to go back and select certain files for recovery it's really slick built but they only offer this on the upper end, and that upper end is either $29 per site per month, or it's $299 per year. So those figures, you know, you can't exactly say it's cheap, but if you've got a really, you know, it's a bit like, um, I'm not doing it at the present moment, but um, I probably will be utilising this system for MailRite. And I probably will pay the two hundred and ninety nine dollars bill because um, it is the Rolls Royce. And if I, you know, if you've got a SaaS website and it's based on WordPress, which my my SaaS company is based on that, I I I I want total backup. I want total redundancy. So I have multiple redundancy systems, and this is probably going to be part of my array of backup. Did that make sense, Bill? It does. I understand, and it, it's all it's all scalable and based on your volume of your business and what you need. Yeah, you know, there's different, you know, there's different solutions for different levels of business. But when you, you know, if let's say I'm still starting to get clients and it's going the right way, and I, I you know, have my ups and downs, but um, that's that's running a SaaS company for you. It's a, you know, it's just a up and down, you know. Um, but, you know, if I started, you know, I had a lot of clients, I would want a really top notch in my in my kind of quiver of backup. <laughs> right. This would this would be a key part of it. And then um so the pricing, another one which I know a few people use is a company called CodeGuard. And it's a reputable company and um I, I know a few people that use CodeGuard and they've got some really um they've got four main choices Samurai, um, Ronnie and Shogun is some of them. Um they're all based on um Japanese kind of warriors or samurai or whatever. Um but they've got some nice price structures from five dollars, thirty-nine, seventy-nine, and two hundred and thirty-nine. And there seems to be a bit of overlap between code guard and um uh a vault press um but i've their pricing 
they they seem to give more choice but they and it does seem you know that they that I, I haven't used these people but i know a couple of people that have and they've used it as their final they've gone for the five dollar um version and it hasn't got everything but it's almost been their final defense almost it, you know where everything else failed they've got this in the background for five dollars a month and i've known a couple of people it's really saved their backside bill mm -hmm. so um i would definitely look at code guard and look what they've got to offer if you're looking for a premier um service backup rather than these plugins bill mm -hmm. or you could you could do both. You could have a plugin and also have a vault press or code guard as a secondary kind of backup system bill. Yep. All right. And then um, one I really don't know a lot about at all is blog vault. Um, I was doing research and I came across them. Um, I don't, um, They've got a simpler pricing structure that is very attractive um, for what they're offering. Um, they've got a basic plan and unlimited plans. Um, but it's not a company that I know too much about, but that, that doesn't mean anything. Um, there's a lot of WordPress companies out there that I, I'm not aware of. Um, um, one of the fact one of the factors I want to point out, and I'm not trying to be racist or anything here. I'm just I'm just trying to put information in front of our audience. Is you know you might be concerned where your data's been stored. Um, with um, with VaultPress and also with CodeGuard, they're US based companies. Um, with BlogVault, it's an Indian based company. So I. That doesn't mean they're not storing the data in a US data storage facility. Um, I'm just pointing that out, Bill. I don't know if that's racist uh, when you talk about countries. Country is not really racist. No, you're talking no. about the security, and I have I have concerns of, uh, especially in the, the Eastern Bloc countries, of having anything there. I, I certainly yeah, wouldn't I have my I... work in China. <laughs> it's not racist. It's just the performance of those areas. I've seen a lot of people. In my business, you know, working with those podcasters who are developing websites and some small business folks lose their domain or have issues when they've gone out of country, especially to India, to build those sites and to host them. Yeah, I think I think in especially if you're dealing with business, and I think with some of these higher solutions that we're talking about, Bill, it is going to be somebody that's actually making money from there. Now, I say that, but um, everybody should be making money from the website, even if you're a brick and mortar business. Yep. You should be getting um, clientele, and you should be using your website to drive people to your physical location. Um, so when it, but you know, then you've got businesses, you know, if their website was down, they would be considerably financially affected. And some of these higher um, solutions that we're looking at, it's those type of people that would probably yeah. look at these solutions, Bill. Yep. The online business arena, uh, online is there's some really good people and there's good people all over the world in different places. So it's not let India could be bad or, I mean, yeah. everyone is bad. I just, you've got to be careful. You yeah. you can have be scammed inside the United States too. Bottom line is have a reputable person you can work with on your website and wherever you host your website, make sure it is a hundred percent reputable. Control your domain name. I mean, we're going back over basics here. You can always go back to the basics. Make sure who is that you have full control of your domain name. And then there's, yeah. and you're talking about backups. That's a whole new ball game about being attacked, so on and so forth. You know, something goes wrong. But, uh, yeah. you know, we sort of sidetracked there. Get back yeah, to the good old I've, backup yeah, stuff, but it's yeah, important. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, important. It is. Yeah, it is. And that, and um, yeah, go ahead. And then um, I'll go on to one um, that does backup. It provides a dashboard, and it's I, I use it, and I use it. I use this as part of my... Um, service that offer clients it's managed wp mm -hmm. um 
and it's it's what I use to manage my clients that utilize WP's Tonic services. Um, and it's part of our backup system and restore system that I actually use for clients. Um, and they're based in Chicago and they provide great technical support and I have the premier service level. Um, and it's just a really fantastic service and they like it's managed WP and they do offer a free service where you, um, um, you install a plugin on the client site, but you then you can store in multiple cloud like Amazon or Dropbox or, you know, um, or your own server. You can store it on another server, which is what we do. Um, and with two clicks, I can restore a client site and always I can go back in time as well. Um, so it also offers a, a kind of virtualization. It's just a fantastic product. Um, and it, they provide really good technical support if there is any issue. And I just found them really, really good. But I don't, um, I think that, you know, with, like with Vault Press, we're going into the more kind of professional, you know, medium, higher business, you know, uh, the kind of individual that probably would look at this. If they're doing it themselves, they've probably got somebody in house doing development, design, and marketing anyway. If you understand what I mean, yep. Bill. Yeah, absolutely. They're big enough. Um, um, and then there's another one um, that does a very similar service to Manage WP that um, was highly recommended. And I looked at it and I am tempted. Um, it's called CMS Commander. And their prices are, are much more are more competitive than managed WP, but I wouldn't say exactly that managed WP is ridiculously overpriced. Um, it seems a really good product. Yeah, thirty uh, websites for fifty bucks. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good um, if they if, if they perform. The wild you got five stars. It, it, it's getting back to what we that little conversation we had about India. One of the things <laughs> is he he doesn't the developer of this. It looks like it's a you know it's a one man developer, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but he doesn't really make it very clear. Um, obviously, you store you can store it anywhere, but um, he doesn't really tell you where the company's based. You know, um, I presume because it's a German developer that the actual underlying company is based in germany but it doesn't make it there's no company address there's no um physical address on the website um where you go to manage wp they are registered they're a u.s based company and they're registered in chicago bill right it's really quite and and um or virginia i think it's actually virginia actually i, I apologize folks uh, I think the the chief developer lives in Chicago, but I think the actual company is based in Virginia. But the physical address there, you can look it up. They're based in the US built. Um, unfortunately, CMS Commando, it's not so clear where they're registered. Um, but it's, it, they just provide the software. They're not providing the storage facility. You, you use Amazon, Google, um, storage. Or there's a host of solutions in there, Bill. Yeah, I just uh, I just googled uh, CMS Commander on WordPress.org. Yeah. So I'll see if there's anything up here. I didn't so, see anything on the website though. No, no, I didn't. You might be able to find something. You normally embarrass me. But you normally find what I can't find. Um, there's nothing on so, the website, but they've got a little bit more information on WordPress.org. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've looked at some services that all you know that are alternative to plugins, you know. But all these services will provide a plugin that you install, but then they provide a web-based interface where you can. Um, the so the other factor is that these type of services that we've gone through so far, Bill, are really for people like yourself and other people that got multiple websites. And you want one one kind of central interface to manage your recovery, your backup, 
uh, in one central interface bill. Right. Right. Yeah. By the way, I looked up uh, Thomas Hofer, Hofter, the, mm. the person who developed the the, the system. Yeah. And, and of course, he's out of Germany. And yeah. That, so you don't just don't you don't know where the server is, basically. Well, he's, he's not provided. Uh, he, that's that. I, I'm not. I don't think I've made this clear. I think some of the earlier services they actually provide storage. Where when you're talking about um, managed WP and CMS Commander, that you you store it on some cloud storage that you provide that you have control over. Mm -hmm. So they're just providing the software, the web based interface, um, where like they're providing a kind of SaaS solution, but they're not providing. I think they might provide some in-house solution, but you can store it on Amazon, like I say, Google, Dropbox. There's a host of cloud solutions. But those cloud solutions will be, un those cloud storage solutions will be under your control. Right. 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 So it doesn't probably matter that they're not based. But the under, you know, it, you know if it's critical medical, you're running, you know, whatever it is, it might become an issue, mightn't it? Right, right. Anyway, so... Yeah, so I just thought... But, and then, um, to finish off, we've got a host of services that will manage everything for you. You know, um, if you just can't be bothered with all this and you ain't got somebody in-house that you... You know, and you might have somebody in-house, but, you know, people come and go... And you can fall out with employees, can't you? Um, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to have people that you can rely on that are not totally involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business. And there, there are a host of companies that will keep your site secure, keep all the plugins, do backups, and also do some minor work on your site, all sorts of levels. And I'm just going to go through some yeah. of them. We just got the um, uh, three-minute warning. Right. So we've got w, WP Site Care. They're one of them that does support. Um, you got WP Butler. Yeah, you got WP uh, Valet. Valet. Um, Valet seems to do a lot of high-end stuff. That's just the impression I'm getting from the website. Um, you know, there's my own company that does a bit of this as well. Um, so there's a few there's a few companies out there that are doing this type of. Um, they will do everything for you. They will recover the site. They will keep it monitored. Um, and they so will in do episode other... fifty, we're going to dive more into that. Some of these other hybrids, right? Um, we just we're just going to do an overview of everything we've discussed, okay. and I might add some other plugins and hey, other things that i've found over the past couple weeks let's tighten this up and just go quick quick review to say that hey we went out and visited uh sacramento wp this week it was a really fine time let's see we saw some of our friends out there john Locke, of course and brian burn burn is it Byrne? born 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 and it was really nice because other people recognize us from the show so people are listening out there and they're watching the uh the youtube as well but we get better credits yeah. for from the podcast. They said I was they said I was the better looking one, Bill, <laughs> We are definitely noticeable when you get to see us firsthand. I'm I'm uh, five six. Uh, how tall are you, Jonathan? Six foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and you know, he's from England, America, whatever. So anyway, yeah. that was kind of fun. It was good to see people. Really enjoy getting out. Excellent. Then, uh, I'll tell you what, excellent, excellent meetup, hour and a half. They basically took a uh they took Photoshop and coded it, had it all coded, laid out a page in, in HTML and moved it into WordPress and created a child theme. Unbelievable. I, I can't remember the guy's name who gave it. It was a professor. No, I can't. But he did a fantastic it, job, didn't he? You know, way over my head, but just really opened up my mind to what could be or what can be done. Basically, there's a course in Lynda. You can go into Lynda. You can learn to do all that through Lynda. And then we had a, a WordPress meetup last night and we had Sally, um, uh, Sally, uh, Go is it Gushed? Ghost? Yeah, Ghost. 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 Sally Ghost. Uh, it was always nice to have Sally here. We showed around Reno. Went out to eat dinner the night before. So if you're in town, make sure you look us up. And uh, yes. we'll, we'll, a lot of entertainment right now going on here. So it was yeah. really fun. And next month, um, August, I think we're looking at maybe going to the East Bay meetup. I think August yes. 23rd is the date. 
Not yeah. quite sure what date it is. I think we'll we'll give you a heads up if we're there. So if you're in the East Bay and that's in Oakland, and we're, come by. We're planning. We're planning to maybe to hit some uh, word camps in September, aren't we? Boo? Yeah, absolutely. I've already um, put my heads up for Las Vegas and want to definitely get down to the Southland. So Jonathan, uh, let's close it up. Um, we've gone 25 minutes, I think. 25 yeah. 11. So that's about the right time. Thank you, folks. Yeah. Wave goodbye, and we'll stop. This is the end of the podcast, and then we'll be on for a couple seconds on YouTube.